discuss it. Okay. Peter. What? Well, what I've just said, I was trying to say exactly what that is. What was different about what I just said? Yeah. So connect, I'd say that means integrate no, this the performing about. arts and wellbeing panels. So what we're voting on is the final line in the report. Yeah. Establish a more permanent forum that can support the development of the performing arts. That's, yeah. Okay. And we... I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it needs to be said any differently to the number seven point, but there we go. I, I think it does consult with the well being panel if they want to explain. Sure. Okay. So what do we, what do, we, so do, you, the, do you do you? Yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. um, and, and there's no there's, the no there's no harm in having an having an integrated okay. at a later date. Okay. Okay. So Alice proposing, Peter seconding, and all those in favour. Any against? Thank you and any abstention? Okay. Thank you, Al. Cheers. Right, the next item on our agenda is three-year funding agreements, uh, and I'd like to invite Peter Wheelhouse to come and tell us about them. Okay, for a number of years, the, the council has supported a number of not-for-profit organisations within the town, um, and the the situation that we're in really is is that in many cases. Uh, there is an ongoing need on the part of those not-for-profit organisations to be supported, and particularly in line with our wellbeing objectives. Um, the significance of three-year funding for many of these organisations, or at least multi-year funding, is that it assists them with, the, with their own financial planning over a, a medium-term period. In this case, we're identifying three years as representing that medium term. It also helps us in terms of our own medium-term financial planning if we think about entering into agreements which are longer than a single year. Into any huge detail um, with regards to uh, the needs of each individual organisation that are identified in this paper. Uh, all I really want to do at this stage is, is to indicate to you that we have identified what we think the, the primary benefits are of continuing to support these not-for-profit organisations. To, to say that um, uh, we have identified what we think is a, a, a need in each of the, the next three years in terms of the finance that these organisations require to be able to operate and also to uh, identify that there are a number of conditions that we feel should apply to each of these organisations should you choose tonight to support uh, these organisations over the next three years. Um, and those conditions are identified on the, the final page of the paper. And, and they're quite important in the sense that it's really critical that we understand what each of these organisations are going to deliver and what kind of targets they're going to meet. So, first of all, the belief is that we should uh, <coughs> sit down with each of these organisations and agree a set of targets which are capable of, of being measured. Secondly, that we should agree uh, a communications plan with each individual organisation which acknowledges the support that the Town Council uh, is providing but also ensures that our brand features in their publicity in the future. And, and finally, but most importantly, that we should hear on an annual basis how well they're doing against those targets that, that have been set. Um, and that at that point we review um, that agreement uh, and the, the levels of funding that we're providing to each of those organisations. So the recommendations are set out um, in the paper. I think the suggestion is that, is that in, in fact, we need to amend those slightly um, in the sense that 
uh, number one recommendation, I don't know whether you can put, put those up on the screen, is that we approach, sorry, we agree to the approach to multi-year agreements set out in this report. What we really mean by that is that those proposed conditions that are set out in detail should apply. So that should probably be a bit more explicit within those recommendations. Um, the other slight amendment is that uh, the suggestion is that um, there should be delegated authority to the town clerk in consultation with a senior staff advisory group, so not just the mayor, but a wider, wider group of, of councillors to negotiate and agree the detail of targets for each recipient. I think that Peter McFadden may also suggest um, one, one other point. Okay. Okay. So that's it. If you've got any questions, obviously I'll take them. Yeah, we'll, co we'll come back to the recommendations in a minute. But yeah, thank you, Peter. This has been a long time coming. Can we just uh, keep our questions focused, brief, maybe around the organisations or perhaps the, uh, uh, the proposed conditions? I've got Tim first. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we need to ensure within a service level agreement that there is an opportunity for us to review our support. And the trigger for that would be the annual report. We would expect, for example, a set of accounts to be presented as part of that annual report and for us to ask questions of the organisation in, in terms of whether they're, they're managing, whether they're performing um, generally. Do, do we feel that, that um, we can continue to support those organisations at that level of funding. Well, I, th I think that that. Um, that's for you to decide, really. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say in, in the next year, this would be the limit, but in future years, we could change that limit. There would, there's no, yeah, absolutely. I've got a question on Tim's table. All my um, education work, um, I guess there will be other organisations that might want to come to Food Town Council and say, look, can you fund this? Would, they, would that be a valuable tool? Any organisation can come to the council at any time, really, you know, if it feels that it has a, a need that needs to be met. But I think that we're going to be constrained by budget. Um, I mean, as, as we as we are uh, meeting here today, uh, we know that, that we are going to be working within a, a relatively tight budget for next year. And, I, and uh, I, I think that, that that will be a consideration in terms of what we can do in year one. In answer to your second question, um, of course, you know, if, if it comes to light that an organisation needs more support, then it will be in the gift of the council to decide this time next year as to whether we should change the uh, uh, arrangement with each individual organisation. So the, there is ultimate flexibility, but I, but I think that, that that flexibility will come on an annual basis. Uh, it will be difficult for, uh, for us to make changes, you know, part way through a year. Okay, I'm going to take Simon and then I know I've got other people coming back, so let's take Simon first. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, Peter, can you explain to us the process consultation and transparency that is, um, has gone around the selection of these organisations, particularly for three-year funding agreement? and what the kind of foundation for selecting them has been. I think for a lot of them it's quite evident that they fit the Town Council's well-being agenda very closely, but some of them seem to
to not do that. And I'm just interested in why they've been selected for these agreements rather than other organisations. In many cases, we're, we're dealing with organisations that the, the Town Council has been supporting over a number of years, but not on a multi-year agreement basis. Um, that, that's a starting point. However, you know, we are conscious, you know, working in our various networks around the town of who, who needs support. You know, it, it isn't uh, just myself who, who, who has been working on this. I mean, there are other colleagues, for example, Kate Hellard, who works within the, the community sector, um, who has been working with a number of organisations around the town and the, the requirement for us to, to step in and support them with their financial needs has become apparent through, through that networking that we've been doing. Um, I don't know whether anyone else who is involved in, the, in this process would like to uh, offer any uh, further information. I don't, don't know whether Paul would like to add to that. No, I mean, it, that, what you said is fine. Jean, can I bring you in there? So, so just a couple of points. I think one of, one of the issues for having a, a multi-year agreement as opposed to any other agreement was um, generally people that were tried and true. So we weren't, we weren't going to commit to a new organisation, even if it was within our strategy, for three years. But that's not to say that they couldn't be funded. Um, the other point I wanted to make in response to what you were saying is that um, if organisations are doing really well, um, with, with our funding and they've got so far, it may be that they can get match funding or crowdfunding. So there are, there are lots of other mechanisms for funding. There's, there's crowdfunding, there's, there's, um, there's other smaller grants and there's this. So we wouldn't necessarily, if they were doing well, lob them more money. We might say, well, you're doing so well, you know, maybe you need to do your own, your own fundraising and we will kind of support you as a baseline because there's always new organisations and new things that either we want to do or the town wants to do um, that, that we want to support. So, I, you know, that's an important point. But one of the criteria is, is that the, the organisations that generally that we're supporting for multi-year agreements is, is we know them well, they're tried and true. You know, they're, 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 A, B, they're delivering what we've agreed is our strategy. So, as you see, many of them are well-being. And then there's, there's, there's things, uh, there's, there's, for example, um, Harry's Hydro, where there's been a commitment in the past to an organisation that, that maybe it wouldn't make it to our priorities, but is, is a commitment that we have to honour. hope that helps. Thanks, Jean. Mel, and then Charles. I apologies. I meant at the beginning to declare a non-pecuniary interest in two items on this report. I won't speak on this report, but one of them is I'm a trustee at Perth Room and I have a personal connection with uh, the chairman of uh, Froom Community Education. Thank you. Charles. <coughs> The, uh, the funding that you're offering is going to be clearly very valuable and well received with grateful thanks from all these organisations, nice speakers, active and in touch. But the fact remains that the majority of them, if not all, have to find even more than this funding elsewhere. So whilst it's a very valuable contribution and a sign of support, the organisations are still fundraising like mad elsewhere and they have reports to give to those other funders, including the Charity Commission. So uh, there are other players in the game by a long way. Uh, but what you're proposing, of course, is, is very well received and uh, gratefully received, and it, it will be a help, a significant help. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Charles. Right, can we just um, clarify the, rec the, the new version of the recommendations? Ooh. Yeah, um, one and two remain unchanged, and then number three is delegate authority to the town clerk in consultation, consultation with the senior staff advisory group to negotiate and agree the detail. Okay, are we all clear on that? Uh, can we have a proposal then? Are we, are we happy to take all three recommendations at once? Anybody unhappy with that? Three separately. Okay, so one and two. Can we have a proposer, please? Jean, thank you. And a seconder, Rich. And all those in favour? Including me. Uh, and any against? And any abstentions? Okay, excellent. 
unanimous. And then number three, which is to delegate authority. Uh, okay, all those in favour? Sorry, I need a proposer, don't I? Who's proposing? Peter, who's, uh, Sheila is seconding. All those in favour? Thank you very much. All those against? Thank you. And any abstentions? That's a majority. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we are, I'm, I'm moving us on. We're getting there. Uh, right, we're moving into the town hall. I'm going to ask uh, a Paul to give a quick update, and then we're going to move straight into uh, Meg's presentation. Paul. How do I get there? Other way. Thanks, Toby. Um, really, this is just uh, the, 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 the bi-monthly update on the Froome Town Hall project. Um, Colin and I have been having quite detailed discussions with the architects and the builders about colours of paint and types of audio-visual equipment we're going to have in there. Um, I think we're both really pleased the way it's progressing. It's, it's going more or less on schedule. Uh, it's it, it's a, a, a one-week delay on the original plan, which isn't too bad, I don't think, over a year and we should take ownership uh, in the first half of February. Um, there are lots of little bits and bobs that, that Colin and I are spending an awful lot of time making uh, uh, at the moment and we want to just sort of give you the confidence that what we think we're deciding on is, is, is right. Um, Mel will, uh, Meg will cover a lot of the, uh, the what next questions in this, uh, in her part. So the last part for me is just to say, at the last meeting you asked me to put the uh, uh, Palmer Street offices on the market. They are on the market. They're on the market for 375 um, with McAllister's. It's a prime piece of real estate if anyone's really interested. Uh, you know, we could maybe do a deal. Um, but, uh, but seriously, in the week that it's been on the market, I think we've had six or seven people around to visit it already, which uh, is an indication of the interest in it. So. Uh, while I wouldn't say 375 is in the bag for us, I, I'm quite confident that we're going to get um, more than we thought a couple of years ago for it. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Paul. Uh, Meg. So we'll take questions for Paul and Meg after we've heard Meg's presentation. <coughs> So hello, um, <laughs> so my name is Meg Mosley and I am the Marketing Communications Manager for Froome Town Council and within that I am the manager of the Froome Town Hall, which at the moment I've been in post for eight weeks and this is the main area that I'm focusing on, I've been auditing marketing and I'll come back to that but this is, this is the project. Um, I've been working with a whole team on it, so if I can't answer your questions today, I will absolutely endeavour to come back to you. I really care about the project, so sorry if I can't um, answer everything. I've got Paul here who's been working on it with me. I've got Jackie back at the office who does finances and all the budgets, and she's really ready to help come forward with, with any questions around that, so it's all there, ready. Um, okay. So my team is um, Rebecca, who's um, Marketing Communications Administrator, the Froome Town Hall Steward, who we have put out the um, job description and application, and we are shortlisted, and we'll be interviewing December the 14th, the next Wednesday. And in my team also is the information staff, um, Tricia, Teresa, and one to be appointed, so that's my team. <coughs> So looking at the Froome Town Hall, so going back to your, you know, the original brief that was um, created for the Froome Town Hall, the main principles that you wanted was it to be accessible, an information hub for the community, and to retain the integrity of the building and that it's sustainable. Um, so for the information centre, as this town hall will be the hub for the community, um, we've got two recommendations on the report that I um, wrote and one is that the information um, team move up to the town hall with us and that also we create a really good backfill um, to support the services there that are currently at the library. 
Um, so just to talk, that's moving on to tents. So just to talk about the interesting report, I, there's a whole table. I took a day to work at the library with the information team and write up really what, what they provide for the public. Actually, 75% of the footfall is um, local residents and 25% tourists. So we really want to make sure that the services that we give those people coming in the door, that we can retain that in the town hall. Um, I've also met with the lead librarian, Kerryon, who um, went through the table that's in the report there, and um, she's happy that if we can take those things forward and make sure we're really clear that we can also move people back to the library and make really clear the services they give, um, that that will work well. So I had a good meeting with her. Um, so, so the timeline of sort of things happening is that, um, so you created the, the town hall brief that we're carrying out the refurbishment that you're aware is going to finish mid-February and that I'm in position now so that I can deliver on those principles of it being accessible, an information hub, integrity of the building and sustainable. So looking at the tenants, um, we're expecting um, fair room and to come with us and why we hear you active and in touch um, we're hoping that Freedom FM will take one of our spaces and also the volunteer project will be based in our reception we're also in conversation with local um, community organisations so one of the main things to work on is the tariff these are collection tins that were found in the attic so there's a little bit of treasure um, so looking at really at the moment what's happening is we're looking at you know creating the offer. So making sure that we are affordable to community organisations, that the tariffs are right. I'm aware that in November last year um, you had some sort of budgets and finances of what the, the rooms would be valued at to help with <coughs> this. The building's changed a lot since then, the spaces have changed a lot, so we're working hard now to review that and come up with the correct offer, the right tariffs. Um, we've had professional valuations on the spaces as well to make sure that we're doing that. <coughs> so, looking at the spaces, obviously what I said is that we want to make the right offer, the right sort of tariff prices and sustainable and affordable. This is just to show you where the, um, the council chamber is at. It's going to look really foolish. Um, <coughs> it's been kitted up very high spec with really good audio visual equipment. These meetings will be there. Um, so this is a very special room and quite a unique and large space for the room. So quite an exciting space um, for us to have. And also it's the one space that could be actually rival too, which might help generally the building be sustainable so that lots of community organisations can use it. And then the other spaces you've got are kind of office spaces and this is just to show you how we started to put the benching or the desking around in these office spaces and we've got meeting rooms and hot desking. And then really just to show you some nice visuals, some nice things to look at. <laughs> She's being entertained in the original five places. So just to, just to remind us all of just how beautiful some of it is, you know, and all these features that have been retained in the mosaics on the floor and the stained glass um, windows. So it's very beautiful and all, these, all the sort of integrity of the building is being retained in a, in a really wonderful way. Um, at the same time, we're going to launch the town hall at the end of March. We're going to move to February and launch at the end of March. And also at the same time, launch a book on the town hall about its history. Paul will give you more information on that, but I'm working with them so that we can launch that. All about the history of the town hall, but it also brings out some lovely personal stories to, for example, this lovely married couple who got married 50 years ago and there they are outside the town hall again. So it's just a really, really nice book on the history, but with personal stories too. Coming to um, marketing now, oh, we'll be doing loads of this soon. At the moment, I've been auditing and just understanding what we all need to communicate, and I put that in the report. And I've also put in the report what I propose for the next four months' work. 
But I just wanted to say that I'm working as a youth help building, and I've actually completely forgotten to to say one of the recommendations is you are going to be my town hall sponsor. So there we go. Um, so for the marketing, just to remember that marketing, you can demystify it. It is a story told really well with Heart and Soul, and obviously Prue has that. And so that's quite a privilege and exciting for me to do that kind of marketing with you. Um, and that's really the best marketing, and what you all sound like you want to do anyway, is story doing, not storytelling. So really acting out and, and living the values that you want to promote and communicate. So that is the thing I'm really excited and motivated to help with. Um, marketing is my thing, um, it's my strength, and so I, I feel really excited to be in this position. Um, very happy to be here. And I look forward to sharing all the positive messaging that I can do in the community. Great events, as you've mentioned, that go on here. And I hope for social media for it to still have a bit of heart and soul. It can't be that it's just, just information. It needs to be relatable to people. Everyone's really tired online. Everyone's got massive digital energy. So it needs to be relevant and it needs to be not too much and not too heavy because everyone just switches off very, very quickly now. Um, so it's, that's, I can't really see that picture very clearly. So that was just at the Christmas <coughs> event that just happened. Just to show that, you know, we've got this wonderful community here together and I look forward to telling stories with heart and soul and to communicate clearly. There we go, that's my... Meg, thank you very much. Okay, before we move to the recommendations, anybody got questions, comments for Meg or for Paul? Jean? Yeah. Anyone got a microphone near Jean? Thank you. Um, I, I know one of one of the things we've um, we've discussed a little bit is is whether we're going to try and um, market to the some of the statutory services who who currently um, use other places in through um, so like um, child and adolescent <coughs> mental health services uh, rent space in the Black Swan <coughs> and the registrar uses space in the library. And, um, and, and I know, just anecdotally, that some of them aren't particularly happy with their accommodation. There would obviously be an advantage to us in the sense of we're trying to kind of um, communicate better with those services. Are we going to, as part of our marketing, not just market to, to voluntary organisations, but just um, see if some of those would be interested in sharing some space or using some of our space? I don't know. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely, Jean. Uh, we're, we're talking to the registrar, not necessarily about bringing the office up because the county is quite keen on keeping that service in the library, but the ceremonies, I think, would be, we're, we've got to uh, have talked to them in the past and Meg's going to be talking to them soon. Yeah. Um, the other statutory service is quite an interesting one. Um, they, they, some of, some of the statutory services want to be kept in Chapter Mallet without uh, to, to feed off each other, as you and I heard from, um, from Somerset County Council the other week. So I think we need to just tread quite carefully. I think we, we certainly want to encourage many people and as many services in there as possible. Uh, but I think we need to be sensitive about treading on other people's toes as well. Anyone else? Nick? Have we got any pain punches lined up? Uh, all of the ones that, that um, makers listed it will be paying. We'll be paying. Yeah. Anyone else? No? Great. Let's move to the recommendations. There are four of them. Uh, so Tim O'Connor to become the sponsor, the information centre staffed uh, in the library to move to the town hall and agree the general direction of the backfill plan. Uh, and just noting the marketing and communication work for the next four months. So we have Nick. Just on the Backfill. Yes. I've got reservations about. I know lots of people will continue to go into the library as a first point of contact uh, for information, particularly visitors to the town. This is a lovely place to go. Um, I, I don't know if they then prefer to come up the hill up to here to find whether they would be making that effort to do so. So I think I'm a bit worried about the gap that will happen of uh, people going into the library not getting the information they want because they say they've got to go to the top of the hill around the corner and off 
Charles. Uh, I will advocate that you write in a review of how the tourist information and support is working with this uh, removal up to the town hall. You had an extreme, we had an extremely efficient and well run volunteer section in the um, uh, Black, Black Swan area for many years with lots of very uh, enthusiastic, well-informed uh, people that didn't cost you anything, apart from Karen's time. And uh, I think that element of presence in the middle of town, now that the police post has closed and moved into the library, now you're moving the tourist information and town information up to the town hall, uh, you're losing more and more of the walk-in visibility or walk around visibility in the centre of town. Um, you've obviously thought about that before you went the way you did, but I, su I su just suggest that next, in a year's time, you see how it's working. Because I think you're going to lose that essential human contact in the middle of town, which, which has dissipated already, moving into the library in many ways. And it's getting wor it will be worse once you move in that type of human contact to people visiting the town if you move what you've got now into the uh, uh, town hall without a physical presence where you can ask people uh, I think what's, Charles what's it, it, has, it has been thought about quite a lot and there is a plan in place to deal with much of that as possible and I would agree with you that it's reduced already and in fact it was reduced significantly when Mendip, you know, tourist whatever that section amend it was, took the money away from running tourism information. Uh, it's, and it's, it's been difficult for us to keep that, that level of support, you know, even, even as it is, which is not a great level of support. And there are other organisations in town which would be part of the solution, including the library and presumably including the cheese and grain as well. So it's about building it back up in a, in a, in a different way. Great, but you do, you have had, but you've lost uh, a, a, a nil cost group of very good volunteers How many? and they're still out there <laughs> yeah some some time ago i think okay i'm moving us into the recommendations can we take all four as one anybody like to take anything individually no great can i can have a proposer for all four please colin and a seconder rich all those in favor any against any abstentions and that is unanimous thank you Right, we're getting there. Thank you, Meg. OK, we're back to Paul for a very brief progress report uh, on the, delivery, the current year's delivery programme. Yep. Hesitating slightly because my PowerPoint's not in here. No, it's not. So I blag it. Right, okay. Um, as, as you know, um, we have a strategy, we have a work program, um, and the work program is, is produced every year and it forms the basis of all the work that we do. Uh, 
eight months into this year, I thought I'd just give you a quick update on, on how we're getting on. Um, the, the, the headline is that um, we think we're doing fine, actually. We're not doing brilliantly because we can always do better. Um, but a lot of the work programme has either been completed or is making good progress. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You'll, you'll, you'll know that the, uh, the strategy is for four years. Uh, and year one we're eight months into so a lot of the projects that we were starting as a result of the strategy are in progress and starting and, and not completing. <clears throat> what, what I wanted to do is give you some wonderful pictures of pillar one which is the progress we're making on the environment uh, but, but suffice to say that we've, we've, we've done some really good work in this area we've uh, have got management plans um, and I, th I think the, the, particularly on the, the, the conservation side, on uh, the Dippy and uh, on Rodham Meadow, some, some really brilliant progress is being made. Obviously, Chris and, 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 and us have invested heavily in paths over the last six months. We've taken on the show field and installed the, the adult fitness equipment. Uh, so overall, I think the, uh, the, the pillar one, the environment, is doing really well. The, the one element that, that, that none of us are happy with, I think, is the town still feels not clean. Um, and we're making some progress on building a relationship with uh, ID Verdi, which was the landscape group and, and Mendip District Council. But we, we haven't cracked that one yet. I, I don't know why ID Verdi is. I don't know. ID and then Verdi as in green. So. Overall, I think on the environment we do, we're not doing too badly, but with, with that one blip, but, but not through want of trying. Um, in that area as well, of course, we've made some really good progress uh, um, on implementing the sports panels, uh, recommendations. Uh, we're working very closely with, with SASP and, and the SASP, SASP officer who is also uh, Gary Collins and one of our councillors, and things are going really well in that area. Um, pillar two was the prosperity side of things. The, 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 we, we've produced a lot of detail there for you, it, for the record really, so I'm, I'm not proposing to read all of that out. But perhaps the highlight is that, that we have now um, got the neighbourhood plan in place, uh, passed the referendum, and then on the 12th of December, Mendip will be making it, is the term, evidently, which is very, very smart. It will be part of the local development plan. Um, and then finally on pillar three, which is the well-being area and, and the subject of, of what we talked about a lot today and, and what will be incorporated into next year's work programme is, is, is doing more and wider and deeper on well-being as, as we've heard already. One, one area that, uh, that, <coughs> that is, 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 is part of this is the improving, communica improving communications and, and Mel was, uh, Meg was talking about that earlier. So, uh, that, that will be a, an, an expanding area of work for us. And the, the, the final thing I wanted to say on the uh, wellbeing section was about volunteer through. Uh, Kate Hellard has worked really hard um, with SPARK, not, not SAS, but SPARK this time, which is the... Kate, what does it stand for? I'll come back to you, it's fine. Um, we, we, we've signed the contract with them yesterday and, and the, the project is about to be launched and, and, and get un, underway, which I think, it, think is a really exciting project for us to be associated with. So really, that, that was just a, a, a canter through. I did have some wonderful pictures um, that, that I'll send you because I was really proud of them. Um, if there's any questions on progress to date, uh, I'm sure between us, the, the staff and, and, and councillors, specifically the sponsors, can, can answer those. So there was just a canter through. If there, if there are quick questions, we'll take them, but I'd rather move on. It's getting late. Good. Okay, Paul, you're up again. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we're moving on to the next item, which is uh, for us to take a decision about the work programme for the next financial year, 2017-2018. Actually, I'll, I'll do that from here because I'm not going to say very much at all. Um, we, we've, we've talked with councillors an awful lot and it, in, at the two committees about the work programme for the next year. We've had do, good discussions on well-being. We've had really good discussions on, on taking forward our resilience work. And the, um, 
the, the appendix three that you'll see that looks a bit like this enormous great colour table should be in your pack. The bits in red are the new bits that we're proposing. The bits in black are just continuing the projects that we've started this year. And that's all I would say on that. Okay, I'll, I'll just add the importance of the work programme is that it allows us to formulate a budget to set at the next council meeting for next year. Then, of course, we are able uh, to make slight alterations as necessary as things change throughout the year. But the idea is that we're able to set a budget with, a, with some tasks behind it. Any questions on next year's work programme? Tim. Just a point. It was just, um, we were talking about well-being earlier, and it's just to mention that we should keep the staff as well, their well-being, and there's a lot of stuff here, you know, so um, keep that in mind. You know, that's, that's our only point, as probably more as council. That's a good point. Anyone else? Okay, and can I have a proposal for the work programme for next year? Thank you, Colin. And a seconder? Tricia, all those in favour? And any against? Any abstentions? Brilliant. That's unanimous. unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, we are nearly there. So we've got two items to go. The, the next is a proposal to transfer freehold of Rodden Meadow, Waylands, Welsh Mill and the old Showfield open spaces to the Theodora and Lagros Trust. Uh, this is a trust that uh, the trustees of are also the town council. So there's, there's one sole managing trustee and that is the town council. Thank you. Uh, so this is to so that the town so that the town council no longer owns those those assets and they're looked after in perpetuity for the town simply means they can't be sold on by a, a future council uh, anybody got any questions for paul on this mel Could I, I can answer it. Um, the Theodore Land of Gross Trust for Open Space is, as it says, as you, as you perceive, yeah. The, what, one of the areas that, that I, I, it is, is outstanding is, is investigation into the possibility of putting the town hall into a trust for the same reasons. And I'm, I'm, I'm working with a couple of solicitors in town at the moment to, to bring that forward. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, right, I'm, I'm happy to propose this one. Anybody want to 